This is my 511 tactical bag that I have waterproofed by impregnating it with wax. And today I'm going to do a shower test um, to see just how waterproof it is. And this is the cape that I'm going to take on a trip to um, the mountains in Austria. This actually came from uh, the Decathlon store. Um, bought it online here in the US. So uh, while I'm testing how waterproof the tactical bag is in the shower, I'm going to see how waterproof this cape is too. For the bag test I've marked up some bits of paper and I'm going to stuff them in the pockets and we'll see if they stay dry in the shower. Alright, let's make it a rainy day in Austria. Bit of a strange thing to do perhaps. But it's raining pretty hard today. I've got my valuable papers in my bag. And you might be able to see that the rain is running off the wax on the bag. So I'm quite pleased about that. Now I've got it in contact with the poncho here because I mean this is typically how I wear it when I'm carrying my computer and my camera gear. So rain might get stuck in the back here. I'm uh, wearing typical hiking pants and I have a long sleeve shirt on under here and once the rain stops we'll see how wet I got. Now uh, this poncho is big enough to get over my backpack as well so it would normally ride up a little higher than this but for today I just want to see oh it's getting warm I just want to see if it keeps, if the bag stays dry inside. And if I stay dry inside. So let's see. The thing about the water here in Florida is it comes out the ground at 72 degrees Fahrenheit every day all year round. So there's no such thing as cold water here. Let's see how we did. So it's a little difficult to see, but the peak of the hat got wet, obviously, because it was sticking out, uh, out in front. So I'd expected that. The shirt, however, is completely dry. There's no, there were no damp bits at all when I took it off. So I'm very pleased with that. And same applies to the pants. They are wet from the knees down, which was exposed. But everything under the poncho looks really good. So this is the bag right after getting out of the shower. And, um, I've lifted the flap up and you can see that everything under the flap is dry. This is the piece of paper that was in the back of the bag. And, and there are two damp marks on there. I'm going to investigate those in a second and see where they came from. And the piece of paper in the front pocket is bone dry. Looking inside the bag, just here, uh, there's a little bit of damp there, but there's not particularly good cover on the bag there, which is where I think those corners got wet. And the same thing applies on the other side. Again, when the flap is down, there's a little gap here. The bag design is not really designed to be waterproof. But inside the, the top of the lid looks mostly dry except for those edges there where it got underneath. So I think the water is getting in under this flap here. And sorry about the quick movements. And under this flap here. Now I put some extra effort into trying to wax the areas here where the stitching is and underneath there. And I think we got most of it. So, like anything that you try to make waterproof, it's not totally waterproof, but I think it's 
good enough for an occasional uh, downburst. If you want to waterproof your own bag, this is what I used. This is um, colored candle wax. I think this actually came from uh, a Joann store. Bought a pound of it, it's pretty cheap. Um, El Cheapo paintbrush and a glass jar to melt the wax in and to melt it you just put the wax in the jar and stand the jar in a pan of uh, boiling water and leave it until it's it's melted and then just paint it on with the paintbrush all over the bag and then when it's solidified you put the bag inside something like um, a pillowcase I actually used a cotton sleeping bag carrier and then put the thing in the dryer for an hour um, and let it bounce around in there and infuse the wax into the bag.